It's a series of lectures about bleeding and coagulation disorders. In the previous video, we've talked about P2Y12 receptor, which is a receptor on the platelet, and it's a receptor for ADP. Today, we'll talk about the P2Y12 receptor inhibitors. A great video. And now, let's get started. Platelet receptors are proteins and they are part of the glycoprotein coat on the outside surface of the platelets and the P2Y12 is no exception. Your great cell membrane is made of protein among others. Cell membrane proteins are either integral or peripheral. Most receptors are peripheral proteins. Hemostasis has many steps. Temporary platelet plugs also known as primary hemostasis. When we talk about the P2Y12 receptor, we're talking about the temporary platelet plug or primary hemostasis. When we talk about P2Y12 inhibitors, we are talking about inhibiting primary hemostasis. I hope this is clear. If you have problems understanding the platelet plug or primary hemostasis, please watch this great video about anemonic. It's in the playlist. Adhesion, activation, aggregation. First adhesion. How? GP1B, it's a receptor on the platelet, adhere to the von Willebrand brand factor, which is bound to the subendothelial collagen. Okay, then platelet activation by secreting ADP and thromboxin E2. ADP is a great whistleblower and it will cause ADP dependent expression of GP2B3A receptor, but it's more complicated than that. Here's the real story ADP will bind to the receptor such as P2Y12 receptor on the platelet, then GP2, then I'm sorry, P2Y12 receptor will transform this GP2B3A from inactive form into the active form via a conformational change, which means a change in shape. After this, GP2B3A is active and ready to bind other platelets. A molecule of fibrinogen is present in between, and then fibrinogen will be convert it into fibrin, and this will be the secondary hemostasis, also known as the thrombus, also known as the coagulation cascade. P2Y12 receptor is a receptor on the surface of the platelet made of protein, of course, because most receptors are proteins, if not all of receptors. One of the 12 types of purinergic receptors from 1 to 14, P2Y1 is GQ coupled, P2Y12 is GI coupled. What's the function? P2Y12 promotes platelet aggregation. And if you have platelet aggregation, you have a great path towards blood coagulation. If you don't have platelet aggregations, in cases when you use P2Y12 inhibitors such as clopidogrel, no platelet aggregation, no blood coagulation, it's not gonna happen. If there is no platelet aggregation, in vain there is blood coagulation. Parts of my words of wisdom. P2Y12 is a chemoreceptor for ADP, so here is ADP, like here, here is the P2Y12, a receptor for ADP. Okay, fine. Then, since it's GI coupled, I for inhibitory, it's gonna inhibit the level of cyclic AMP. When you have low cyclic AMP, you are ready to convert this GP2B3A from inactive form into the active form. If GP2B3A is active, Platelet aggregation is gonna happen. So when we talk about P2Y12 inhibitors, they inhibit the activation of GP2B3A, they inhibit platelet aggregation, and therefore they inhibit blood coagulation. The good news is this class of medications can prevent thrombosis. The bad news is you are more likely to bleed because there are no solutions in life, only trade-offs. GI coupled prevents the conversion of ATP into cyclic AMP. You remember the enzyme? Adenylate cyclase. When you have low cyclic AMP, you have more calcium. More calcium, more coagulation. Calcium coagulation. So when cyclic AMP is high, platelet aggregation is low. When cyclic AMP is low, platelet aggregation is high. When they go low, we go high. So how does that P2Y12 works? It's a GI coupled receptor, decreasing cyclic AMP, promoting platelet aggregation. How does the P2Y12 inhibitors, the medication work? They inhibit the P2Y12, which is a GI coupled, no decrease in cyclic AMP, no increase in platelet aggregation, makes perfect sense. Medicine is a piece of cake, if explained properly, which is kind of rare these days. 
because most professors are inept. They are more concerned about who is following them on Instagram than about delivering a precise, neat piece of lecture. ADP, P2Y12, which is a receptor for ADP. It's GI, I for inhibitory. It inhibits the conversion of ATP into cyclic AMP. Low cyclic AMP, more calcium. You can now convert this GP2B3A from the inactive form into the active form. Hey, we have platelet aggregation. Let's add some medications which are P2Y12 inhibitors such as clopidogrel, prasacryl, clopidine, and ticagrelor. Now you have no GI. You have no decrease in cyclic AMP. In fact, you'll have increase in cyclic AMP. Okay, decrease in calcium, no conversion of GP2B3 into the active form, no platelet aggregation. Because when cyclic AMP is high, platelet aggregation is low. P2Y12 receptor inhibitors are clopidogrel, prasugrel, ticlopidine, and ticagrelor. Let's start with clopidogrel. It's used together with aspirin, no kidding, because aspirin is antiplatelet. How? By inhibiting the cyclooxygenase. And when we're talking platelets, we're talking specifically about the cyclooxygenase one. When you have no cyclooxygenase one, you have no thromboxane A2. Okay. You remember the two whistleblowers? Yes, thromboxane A2 and ADP. Aspirin inhibits thromboxane A2. Clopidogrel inhibits ADP from binding to the great receptor P2Y12. And this is the whole story, morning glory. Aspirin plus clopidogrel is a powerful combo because not only McDonald's have combos, doctors and hospitals have combos as well, except our combos are very expensive. We do not charge you $5.95. This combo is called dual antiplatelet therapy, used for heart attacks. Yeah, because in heart attacks, you have a clot in your coronary artery. The, um, this is a bad coronary. Okay, if you have a clot in your coronary artery, you can have a heart attack because there is no oxygen supply to the heart. Clopidogrel and aspirin can prevent that. Coronary artery stent. Okay, sometimes your coronary artery is blocked, so we introduce like a catheter or a stent into your coronary artery to poke it and open it and destroy this clot. However, after the surgery is done, sometimes you can clot the stent, which is kind of like, you're very unfortunate. Okay, here comes the clopidogrel and aspirin to prevent the clogging or the clots from forming inside the stent. These drugs can prevent ischemic stroke, so instead of the heart, if this is your brain, and instead of a coronary artery, you have a cerebral artery. Same thing here, a clot can form in this artery, causing an ischemic stroke, because we have two types of strokes, ischemic and hemorrhagic. When there is a clot in the artery, we call this an ischemic stroke. Route of administration of this clopidogrel, per os, which means oral. And the os here being your mouth, not any other os. Okay. Onset, two hours. It's a pro drug, which means it requires metabolism first in order for it to become active. Mechanism of action is a P2Y12 inhibitor. And this is a non-competitive inhibitor. This is irreversible inhibition. If the patient is allergic to aspirin, use clopidogrel. It's a pro-drug activated in the liver by the CYP2C19 member of the cytochrome P450 system. Adverse effects, bleeding, of course, inhibits platelets, TTP, wow, rash and sensitivity. Drug interaction may include other drugs that are inducers or inhibitors of the CYP2C19 member of the P450 cytochrome system. If you love mnemonics, try Picmonic, a picture in a mnemonic, or a mnemonic in a picture, or whatever. And they have a Picmonic about clopidogrel, which is today's topic. This company is awesome, and see the link in the description below. They are not a sponsor of this video, I just recommend them. We're done with clopidogrel, let's go to the next guy, prasugrel. Together with aspirin for acute coronary syndrome, which is an umbrella term that includes three things. Unstable angina, non-ST elevation myocardial infarction, or no ST elevation, and ST elevation myocardial infarction, non-STEMI and STEMI. Percutaneous coronary intervention to keep the stent open, as we have discussed with clopidogrel. 
it's a pro drug same as clopidogrel it's more effective than clopidogrel however there's more risk of bleeding because this is life if you inhibit the platelets more you're gonna bleed more in life there are no solutions only trade-offs side effects bleeding contraindications if you have active bleeding if i have a hemorrhagic stroke please don't give a drug that will make you bleed this is known as stupid clopidogrel prasugrel teclopidine ticagrelor teclopidine is the evil one teclopidine believe it or not was the first p2y12 inhibitor in history this was the first drug invented by the way there is no difference between saying a p2y12 inhibitor and adp receptor antagonist because as you know p2y12 is the adp receptor so if you have a question on your exam and they are asking what's the mechanism of action of clopidogrel prasugrel teclopidine decagrelor or whatever and you have among the choices adp receptor antagonist choose it if you don't find it, don't panic. Choose the P2Y12 receptor inhibitor. Just common sense, guys. Why do we call teclopidine the evil one? Because there is risk of life-threatening hematological toxicity such as agranulocytosis as well as thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. What the flip is agranulocytosis? A in Greek means no. Granulocytes, osis means condition. It's a condition when you have no granulocytes. You need some etymology and terminology? Okay, here we go. Why do we call anatomy, anatomy? Okay, tomi means to cut, like a knife. Ana means up. So literally, anatomy means to cut you up. Don't forget, tomi means cut. How about atom? A means no, and tom means cut. Atom is the thing that you cannot cut down into pieces it's the building unit of matter, at least at that time. What's the actual building unit of matter? I'll leave this to the great chemistry professors. Back to a granulocytosis, the conditions with no granulocytes. What the flip are the granulocytes? They are three cells. They are Ben, basophils, eosinophils, neutrophils. When you're taking this garbage drug, you are risking decreasing these cells in your body. Those are white blood cells. When you have no white blood cells, you're more liable to infections. What else? Agranocytosis, TTP, aplastic anemia, which is a wrong name. The correct name should be aplastic pancytopenia because you have decreased red blood cells, decreased white blood cells, and decreased platelets. The best name is aplastic pancytopenia. Therefore, if you are giving a patient a teclopidine or clopidogrel or prasugrel or ticagrelor, please check the complete blood count frequently to check for a granulocytosis, TTP, and or aplastic anemia, which is not anemia, it's a pancytopenia. And that's a great question. You might have a board question in your exam and you have like a patient taking clopidogrel or teclopidine. And the question is, which of the following should be done frequently? And one of the answers, measure the CBC frequently, and this is the correct answer. Why? Because we have agranulocytosis and aplastic anemia as side effects. Ticagrelor, trade name, Berlinta. And this is a great name, by the way. If I have a daughter, the first daughter is gonna be Malassezia, because I love the great Malassezia fur fur fungus. And the second daughter will be named Berlinta because I love P2Y12 inhibitors. Vampires are history. P2Y12 inhibitors is the new thing, if you know what I mean. Uses of ticagrelor, prevention of strokes and heart attacks, of course, adverse effects, shortness of breath, bleeding, no kidding, ventricular pause, wow, and allergy. Contraindications if the patient is actively bleeding, and CYP3A4 inhibitors, because this ticagrelor is metabolized by this enzyme CYP3A4, which is a member of the cytochrome P450 system in your liver. So if you are taking CYP3A4 inhibitors, such as like grapefruit juice, for example, grapefruit juice inhibits this enzyme. When you inhibit this enzyme, no one will metabolize ticagrelor. Ticagrelor will 
float in the plasma freely with no one to break it down. This will increase ticagrelor toxicity, increasing your risk of bleeding. Don't drink and drive. Don't text and drive. And don't take ticagrelor while on grapefruit juice influence. Now let's have some fun. Here are the P2Y12 receptor inhibitors, also known as ADP receptor inhibitors. Clopidogrel, prasugrel, teclopidine, ticagrelor. What's the mechanism of action? They are P2Y12 inhibitors, aka ADP receptor antagonist. Prodrug? Yes, 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 no. Ticagrelor is already active. If it's a prodrug, it's not an active metabolite. If it's a prodrug, it's not an active metabolite. If it's a prodrug, it's not an active metabolite. But if it's not a prodrug, yes, it's active. At least this is how I remember it. Metabolism, or how does the drug become active except ticagrelor because it's already active. So this one needs CYP2C19, CYP3A4, CYP2C19, CYP3A4. So tuck, 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 tuck the alternate. CYP2C19, then this. Then CYP3A19, then this. All of these are members of the cytochrome P450 system in your liver. Some notes, clopidogrel used together with aspirin for prevention of thrombosis after placement of coronary stent, which is part of a percutaneous coronary intervention, hashtag keep the stent open. Slow metabolizers have no effect. Prasugrel, good for patients undergoing PCI, same thing. Possible adverse effect is life-threatening bleeding because it's more efficient and effective than clopidogrel. Teclopidine is the evil one. Why? It can cause life-threatening hematological toxicity such as agranulocytosis or neutropenia, aplastic anemia and TTP. Sorry, I meant aplastic pancytopenia. Check the CBC, please. Ticagrelor, when you give it with aspirin, this is called synergy. In pharmacology, synergy when 1 plus 1 equals more than 2. In mathematics, this is called stupid, but in pharmacology, this is called synergy. We use ticagrelor for patients with acute coronary syndrome, which is an umbrella term that includes unstable angina, non-STEMI, and STEMI, as well as post-MI as maintenance therapy. All of these drugs inhibit the ADP receptor. They inhibit platelet aggregation, but they have a side effect of bleeding. If you have a patient who is scheduled for surgery, please stop all of these drugs at least five days before the surgery. Again, talk to your surgeon because everybody is different. I have a great PDF note about acetyl salicylic acid on Patreon just for a dollar. Basically, this is free. Let's be honest. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Please subscribe, join the tribe, and hit the bell. Follow me on Facebook. I have more than 90 cases there, and I have even more cases, and all of my notes are available on patreon.com slash medicosis, where you can just download all of my PDF notes, and they are yours forever. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard.